Good morning, ladies, and welcome to the call. The call is the Saturday prayer session of Esther's preparation room. We gather together to pray for our needs and the needs of our loved ones. We intercede on behalf of the Church of God and the nations and take on God's prayer points. Our theme for the month of May 2020 is the anointing, and today's prayer session is centered around service and leadership. With that, I'm going to hand the session over to Titi Olubajo, who will be leading us in main prayers. Titi, over to you. Thank you, Gogo. Thank you, Gogo. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to start, or we'll continue on in Thanksgiving. Psalm 100, verse 1 to 5 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. No, be reassured that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. Ladies, we are not orphaned. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We eat at the king's table. Let us thank him because there's so much at the king's table. There is joy at the king's table. There is peace at the king's table. There's wisdom. There is strength at the king's table. There is, there is love. There is romance, friendship, vision. You name it. In him, we live, we move, we have our being. Father, we just thank you. Let us thank him for every pleasure. Forevermore, we have experience at the king's table let us bless his holy name let us enter his gates with thanksgiving let us pursue him passionately with praise you can't fake gratitude this morning it comes from a place of reflection think deep down as to what god has done and to who god is and give him the praise this morning bless his holy name hallow his name for the lord he's good not that he will be good, not that he was good. The Lord is good, is good. Our circumstances might not be ideal. Our children might be giving us a headache. Our career might be filled with uncertainty, but the Lord is still good. His steadfast love endures forever and ever and ever. And his faithfulness is to all generations. Let us bless his name. Because he is our God, he is our God. Let, that, let the weight of that truth hit you. He is our God and we will praise him. You are my God, I exalt you. I give you thanks from the depths of my heart. You are good and your love, your love endures forever. Your love weathers all storms. Your love carries all burdens and breaks all yokes and weights. Your love liberates me, liberates us into a session of thanksgiving. Let us continue to praise God. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart, with your whole heart, with every fiber in your being, with every cell in your body. Let every part of you respond in thanksgiving to God. Let every part of you break out in shouting, in rejoicing unto God. Show forth. Let every part of you begin to declare, God, you are a miracle working God. You show forth all thy wonderful works. We will be glad. Let your spirits rejoice. Laugh on the inside of you. Even if everything else says you should be calm, you should be sad. Laugh on the inside of you. Laugh out loud. If you need to be glad and rejoice in God, Father, we sing your praises this morning. You are God most high. We worship you. We adore you. Even when our enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. Because, Lord, your loving arms are open unto us. We can hide ourselves in you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank him because he has maintained your right and your cause. The Lord has fought for you. The Lord has fought for you. The Lord has fought for you. Rejoice, 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 because he is a God that is, that is involved in the affairs of men. He sits on his throne, judging right. Let us bless his holy name this morning, continuing thanksgiving and praises to God. You know, for me, I'm just so grateful to God. Let's thank him for the privilege to call him Habba Father, the greatest accomplishment is to have accepted 
the salvation that Jesus freely offered unto us. You know, I don't know about you, no matter how low I get, no matter how dark my circumstances may be, no matter how weak I am, if I can just say Jesus, the devil is in trouble. If I can just whisper, Habba, Father, my daddy rises up. Let's just thank him for every time that you don't even have the strength to pray, but you just whispered, help me, Lord. And he has responded so lovingly, so faithfully. Praise him for that. Glorify him. Glorify him for absorbing the death that we deserve and granting us victory and power over sin. He paid it off. He paid it off. He paid it off. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you because when you forgive, you are not like man. When you forgive, you both forgive and forget. Lord, I thank you. We worship you this morning. We bless your holy name. We're so grateful. So many things for us to be thankful about. So many things that when we, when we, when we pause to think about your goodness, we thank you for wisdom, which guides us in times of, of confusion and perplexity. Your wisdom comes shouting at the mountaintops, here I am. I am ready to offer you assistance. I am ready to pull you out. Lord, we thank you. We praise your holy name. Sisters, rejoice in your spirit. Just pour out this love offering of thanksgiving unto God. Praise him for preserving our lives and protecting our loved ones, even in this season. Even in this season. We praise you, oh God. We praise you, oh God. The death toll in America is now a um, um, 100,000, and that is just a huge number. You know, some young, old, rich, poor, married, single, black, white, sinner, saint, you name it. A lot of people have passed, but the breath that God has kept in our lungs is still, is still working and serving us today. We are alive and well. Let's just worship. We offer praise unto you with the breath in our lungs. We say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The devil will not hold back our praises this morning. Lord, we thank you. We offer you so much, so much more, so much more this morning. We offer everything of us. We give you praise, give him praise, give him praise because he is a living hope. Lord, we thank you because you are our living hope. You are a hope that has a pulse. You are, our hope in you is, is alive. Lord, we thank you. We thank you because it is a hope that does not disappoint. It is a hope that does not, you know, put us on a waiting list. It is a hope that is faithful, 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 righteous, unfailing, consistent, eternal, and is the double-breasted God, is the one that is all sufficient for us. You are everything to us, and we worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praises. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let us thank him because he is the commander of our destiny. Let us thank him. Thank him. Thank him for the glorious destiny that we have in him. Listen, we have an assurance that even the brokenness of our lives, the patchiness that we see today, is not what we will be tomorrow. There is a, there is a transformation that is happening. You know, what we see today is not all that there is. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for today because every day is our day. Every day we say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Every single day is our day. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you so much. We pour out an offering. We pour out an offering. These are all the things that I'm grateful for, that we are grateful for this morning. Perhaps there is more that you wish to have been expressing to God. And I'm just going to let you take the next 30 seconds just to worship him in the spirit. Just worship him in the spirit. You know your individual situation. You know how far God has brought you. For the next 30 seconds, just begin to worship him. Worship him in the spirit. Lord, we worship you. We bless you. This is not a routine. This is not a rendition. This is authentic worship flowing, flowing out of a heart of gratitude unto you. Lord, accept our worship in Jesus' name. 
we've read. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So um, I was given the topic service and anointing. Given the topic service and anointing. Um, service um, is when you do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the places you can at all the times you can <laughs> to all the people you can as long as ever you can that is the definition john wesley gave about service and i, and I think i need to repeat that again so we, we can catch it in our consciousness you know service is when you do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can for as long as you ever can this morning by the grace of god we're going to be looking at service we're going to be looking at service through the life of a great woman of god um, called anna and it's centered on the anna anointing when we read luke chapter 2 verse 36 to 38 it says there was also a prophet anna the daughter of penwell of the tribe of asher she was very old the bible says and she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then tragic happens she was a widow until she was 84. she never left the temple but worshipped night and day fasting and praying or interceding coming up to them who is them that is you know um um jesus um baby jesus joseph mary and then simon coming up to them at that very moment she gave thanks to god and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of israel now because essence preparation room is an intercessory ministry we will be viewing the story of anna in the service of intercession you know she had the anointing of the intercessor and we're going to be looking at some key things about her life to remind us of why we are part of this ministry now using john wesley's definition to intercede as we have said um, is to pray all you can by all the means you can in all the places you can at all the times you can for all the people you can for as long as you ever can that is you pray by all means in all places at all times for all people for as long as you live sisters that is the call you and i have heeded that is the call you and i have heeded this is the watchman's anointing anna's anointing is a watchman's anointing it is what it means to set a vigil around the promises of god it is what it means to set a vision around the promises of God. You know, for many, many decades, Anna prayed and cried out for justice and righteousness to fill the earth. How do I know? The answer is right here in the, in the scripture. She never left the temple, continually fasting and interceding. And her story ends when she behold or she beheld the promise of God with her eyes. When Jesus was brought into the temple and it's like, whew, that is it. The answer has come. And she spoke about the child to all who were willing to listen. She interceded. Now, how is it possible? How is it possible to pray as by all means, in all places, at all times, for all people, for as long as we live, right? Without experiencing burnout. Without experiencing burnout. The answer is here in Isaiah 40, verse 31, and which is where we'll take our first prayer point. The answer is in Isaiah 40, 31. According to this scripture, there is a promise of strength to those who are in intimate fellowship, intimate relationship with God. Therefore, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Let us, let us, let us, let us take this moment and just pray. Let us pray that the Lord Almighty will give us the wisdom, begin to raise an altar of communion and intimate fellowship with God in your heart. Begin to discuss with God that, Lord, I, I am understanding why I am part of this ministry now. I am understanding what it means to intercede 
at all times for all people in all places by all means for as long as i live lord god almighty and i understand lord god almighty i need to be able to maintain an intense fellowship with you so that my strength will be renewed daddy lord right now i begin to build an altar of communion unto you i begin to release myself oh god in intimate fellowship with you that my strength will be renewed that your grace will be outpouring and now flowing through me that's that everything everything that i am everything that i am everything that i am indeed will be pleasing unto you that when i pray i will not be weary when i intercede i will not faint Daddy, Lord, I pray, oh God Almighty, that you help me to be restored. Begin to make a commitment. If it's a time of the day, if it's a, if, if it's, it's at all times, begin to, to, to ask for a cloud of his presence to surround you everywhere you go, that you are in constant communion and constant relationship with God. Father, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you keep us intimate with you. You keep us intimate with you, forever connected to the source, so that we will, we, the life flowing through us will be a living one. So that we are in Lord God Almighty, will be holy and acceptable unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Anna's anointing, like we said, is also the watchman's anointing. Um, it is what it means to embrace new possibilities in the place of prayer. To embrace new possibilities in the place of prayer. And, 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 and that is just centered on one simple principle. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven so if that is true if that is true you know why not begin to ask him for nations why not begin to ask him for cities revival and spiritual awakenings why not take a look at the, at your hands right now just spread your palms out look at it take a good look at your hands the destiny of nations are in the hands of intercessors people like you and me who have been given the honor anointing who have been given the honor anointing so i want us right now just to pause and begin to 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 to, to ask that the lord will release release upon us oh god an audaciousness in the place of intercession help us to ask for mountains help us to ask for kings Help us to ask for nations. Help us to pray bold prayers. Begin to pray that by the anointing, listen, you are authorized to declare shifts. We are authorized to declare shifts. We are authorized to declare shifts in the spiritual atmosphere. Do you walk anywhere you are as an intercessor? You are always on call. You are always on call. You are always on call. You are declaring shifts in the atmosphere. Are you, are you in a business meeting and you begin to send something in the spirit realm? You, you reset. You reset. You reset. You declare a shift. Uh, you know, in, uh, in your home environment, maybe a lot of things are happening and, and, and you just sense that something is not right. You intercede immediately. Sometimes it is under your breath. Sometimes it's, it, it, it is shouting out loud. Sometimes it is flat on your face. Just interceding for people. There's so much, there's so much to pray about. There's so much to talk to God about on behalf of people, on behalf of others. So let's just begin to pray. Father, Lord, release upon me the courage. Courage comes from understanding. Boldness comes from understanding of who God is and what he has been, what has been placed in our hands. Let's just begin to ask God, Father, Lord, release upon us. Release upon us, dear Jesus. According to Mark 4, 41, it says they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this? That is our testimony. In the name of Jesus in Esther's preparation room, people will ask, who is this? Who are these people? That even the winds and the sea obey him, obey them. Let's begin to pray that Lord God Almighty, we release ourselves unto you, O God. Father, begin to to, to, to help us speak boldly, to help us declare your will, to you help us declare that your kingdom come be restored in our communities, in governance, in our businesses, in our places of work, in our homes, our families, our relationships, our friendships. We pray in the name of Jesus that your will will be done. Even right now, we pray it, concerning the, the unrest and, and so much uh, um, that is going on, from, you know, regarding George, George, um, 
regarding um, the man who was who was who was who was brutally assassinated who was brutally killed in the presence of all to see that the Lord Almighty will, be, will begin to shift the atmosphere. In Atlanta, let us begin to shift the atmosphere. In, in Minnesota, let's begin to shift the atmosphere. In Houston, where everywhere there are pockets of, 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 of protests are rising, let's begin to shift the atmosphere. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Even as God has released upon us um, all that we need to function in this office. The burden of an intercessor comes with a responsibility that we must not take lightly. It is a burden that, that is to be born with the right attitude. And that is the attitude of intercession. What is that? That is to serve like a servant. To serve like a servant, not with some kind of entitlement mentality, not with a sense of, of, of pride or arrogance, but you serve like a servant. Listen, Anna spent the better time of her years ministering to God. You know, she experienced a um, probably tragic, we don't know the nature of, of the husband's death, but probably tra tragic, likely painful, and maybe even unexpected crisis. She experienced that in a time when the people of God, the yearnings of the people of God for the promises of the Savior was intensifying. And then she shifted. She shifted her pain and her focus in ministry unto God, in interceding for the very, very needs of others. That is the attitude of an intercessor. Majority of your prayers is, is really centered about others, not largely on yourself. You serve like a servant. You become a living sacrifice. That is what it is. We become a living sacrifice. You know, Anna, Anna, she presented her needs, her life, her future to God. She dedicated and submitted her life completely to God, to the ministry of God to the ministry of intercession. You know, to submit is that you are intentionally, you intentionally place yourself under authority. It's a conscious thing. It's not, um, you know, you know it, it, is, it is, you make a choice. It's a choice. You know, I submit myself. I know, yes, there's noise all around me, but hey, I submit myself under the mighty hand of God. So that he now becomes the captain of my ship. He now becomes the one that I, 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 that I receive orders from. He now becomes the executor of my destiny and my future. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. That, that, that right now just begin to, you know, with, offer yourself up as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. To offer yourself, begin to offer yourself, pour yourself as an offering unto God. Say, Lord, here I am. Take all of me. Take all of me. Take all of me. I offer myself unto you. All he's requesting for is a willing act. Don't think about what you did yesterday. Don't think about what happened just this morning. Don't think about anything else. Right now, as, right now if you decide to offer yourself, he is willing and able to save. He is willing and able to accept you. There is no sin that is, too, that is so unforgivable. There is no situation that is too far gone. There is nothing. Don't Right now, if you make that choice right now, he will accept your offering. Father Lord, we just release ourselves. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. 
I give my everything. Oh, begin to release unto God. Take all of us, oh God. Take all of us, oh God. Take all of us, oh God. Every part of us we give unto you in this office, in this service of intercession. Take everything that about us, oh God. We release it unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. And lastly, on this topic, I want us to really um, pray for, for a certain kind of grace. Deuteronomy 1.11 says, May the Lord God of your ancestors, the Lord God of your ancestors, in our case now, the ancestor that we are focusing on in light of intercession is Anna. May the Lord God of your ancestors increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. Listen, um, 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 we're praying for the grace to be a thousand times more strategic, a thousand times more productive or fruitful in the place of intercession. When we think about the story of Anna, and, and you know, the Holy Spirit dropped this in my heart, and I feel that it's true. It's, tr it's so true. Um, she was committed to the service of intercession, right? She was, everybody was yearning for the, 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 the birth of Jesus, the, the promise of the Savior, the promise of the Deliverer. Do you know that? Do you know how fruitful her intercession was? Even today, every time you call upon the name of Jesus, Eh? That is a fruit of somebody's intercession. Every time you were able to call and say, Jesus, help me, save me, deliver me. Every time, every time we are reaping the fruit of one woman's devotion and intercession. You know, among other people that have also prayed as well. So we're going to pray that Lord, that is that, is that um, blessing, a thousand times more blessing that we want to glean from. That the grace to be strategic in the place of prayer that the grace to be able to be productive, release it unto us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you, Daddy. Help us, Lord God. Release upon us that grace, oh God, to be a thousand times more productive, a thousand times more strategic in the place of intercession, in the service of intercession. We want to see results, oh God. Miracle signs and wonders. That is a testimony that you are still real. You are still able to save. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. So let's quickly shift on to um, Deborah's anointing. Um, by the help of the Holy Spirit, um, we are going to look at leadership through the eyes of Deborah. And um, we're really going to set the stage so we can pray um, with understanding. That's the only point of this. So, um, so um, before I go into Judges, so this season was, when you look at the book of Judges, um, it's a season where, you know, the people of God will drift away spiritually. God will bring down judgments upon them. Something will happen. They'll cry out for mercy. They'll get back on track again. And then they'll continue the negative cycle. Some time will pass and they're back at it again. They're back at it again. And this is a season and time where Deborah rose to office. It is a season and time where Deborah rose to office. Right? You know, um, judges uh, 4, 4 to 5. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labitot, Lapidot. Sorry, um, she judged Israel at that time. She dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. You know, a judge is someone who brings others in right relationship. And I, I'm sorry, Deborah here functioned as an administrator. She settled disputes. You know, she provided military leaderships. You know, in a season, this is where I'm going. In a season, you know, of political and economic oppression in a season of uncertainty, in a time where majority of people, you know, they're going about with broken moral compasses, just like the time that we are in today, very similar to the time we're in today, she rose up. She rose up. She rose up. Something is true and clear about um, Deborah because she knew what to do. She was clear of her calling. She was clear. And that is what leadership is. It's not just a title that is bestowed upon you, but a clear recognition of a responsibility or an objective by a person capable of influencing others in that predetermined direction. First of all, there's clarity of purpose. Then second of all, the ability to influence others to flow with you. This influence is not manipulation you know, or coercion. This influence um, is something 
that comes by the spirit. It comes by the spirit. And I just want to say, make a quick, quick, quick side note. You might be just saying, okay, okay, maybe I'm not clear right now. You might not be, you might not be sure. You might not be sure today, you know, but understand that the call of God is progressive. He will keep revealing to you day by day. He will mature you gradually into the fullness of his plan. So don't be discouraged, just stay connected. But back to this influence, it's not an influence of manipulation, coercion. Um, it's an influence that is born and led by the Spirit. It comes from God. As a prophet, it was the mouthpiece of God. And this is how I know. First Corinthians 2.11, it says, For who among you knows the thoughts of man, except his own spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God, except by the Spirit of God. Now, if you marry that with Romans 8.16, which says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? God's children. So a leader's influence requires spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. A leader's influence, true influence, requires spirit-to-spirit -spirit conversations, you know? So we're going to, um, maybe let's take a prayer point. Um, let's, okay, let me see. Okay, okay, let's, 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 let me, let me just, just rush through because we're going to go through all the prayer, all the, all the prayers. So it's a, that is what it means to be led by the spirit of the living God. Amen. So we're also looking at, um, I'm going to summarize what happened in Judges um, with Deborah and Barak. So, you know, also in line with being led by the spirit of God, Deborah was able to give Barak specific instructions about what God, about God's mind for that situation, how God was going to give them victory over Caesarea and all that. And then what happened? Barak said unto her, if that, will go, if that will go with me, then I will go. If that will not go with me, then I will not go. After receiving clear instructions from God. And this, this brings me to a very, very important point. That a leader, just like Deborah, must learn to manage her relationships. Must learn to manage her relationships. Why? Because people are important to God. People are so important to God. When I, when I was reflecting on John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, God gave, gave up the most precious thing to him so that others can be redeemed. So we must always prioritize people over process. If you are someone that you've noticed that you are, the first response is irritation at, uh, you know, at, at, on, on, you know, at, 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 at deadlines or timelines that are unmet, you know, check yourself. Process is important, but we must always prioritize people over process. So many people, organizations, ministries, and nations are limited because their leaders have become burdens. They are not assets, but liabilities. You know, we have to respond to the needs of others, becoming a magnet. People came to Deborah. Deborah didn't go to them. They, she was sitting under the tree. People came to her for judgment. She led by example, and it was because of love, love for people. So first of all, we're going to pray that Lord Almighty, Please release, 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 release. You know, they, upon me the courage to heed the call. In times of perplexities, we are anointed and commissioned to add value and to bring rare and essential solutions. So, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, release upon us that courage. Just like Deborah rose up in a time and a season of of, 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 of turmoil and, and, and people not quite knowing what to do, where to go, um, so much oppression that was born as a result of disobedience. Lord, give us the grace. Such a time is this. We are living it in it in 2020. Help us, oh God, as women of God, to rise up to our calling. Help us to rise up, oh God Almighty, to heed the call. Help us to begin to see ourselves as you see us. You have given us an anointing. You have commissioned us to be value givers, value adders, and those that bring rare and essential solutions. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive this, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, secondly, um, we want to pray that for the heart of men. You know, um, many times we get distracted looking at people's pockets, looking at people's talents, giftings, and things that they're able to give or, or use in support of our ministries that we, 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 we get caught up in, in, in all of that. But the truth is, when you are favored, when you have the heart of men, when you have access to a person's heart, you know, you have access to all of him or her. You know, you don't have to ask for money. 
You don't have to ask for overtime. You don't have to ask, ask for them to, to, to go the extra mile because they love you. You have their hearts. So let's begin to pray that, Lord, release upon us, O oh God. Give me the heart of men. In this ministry, in this call that you have called, yeah, that you have given unto me, in this service that you have placed in my hand, Lord Jesus, bring me the heart of men. Bring me burden bearers. Bring, bring me those that will support God. Bring me their hearts. Bring me their hearts. Because I know that when I have access to a person's heart, I have access to all of him. Father, Lord, release upon us, O oh God, release upon us the, the heart of men that have been commissioned to support us in the name of Jesus. Esther was favored by everyone who saw her, and that enabled her to be able to function or to get to the office that God has called her to be. We need people. Father, in the name of Jesus, provide the heart of men. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the last thing we want to pray, we want to pray. As I said, you know, Deborah was willing to do whatsoever it takes to ensure that the plan and purposes of God came about. I believe, you know, she, she, the Bible says she arose and went with Barak. She's not a, a soldier or a warrior per se, but she arose and went with Barak. Barak requested, she didn't say, oh, it's instruction of God. If you like, don't do, don't do. That's not my problem. I've already given you instruction, go. She was willing to roll up her sleeves and get into the trenches. Why? Because of love. Let us pray that we will be led by love in all of our decision making as leaders. That, that we will be led by love. And that is centered on 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7. It says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. Are you the kind of leader that automatically you're jealous of anyone who has a great idea? Or do you constantly perceive others as a threat to your position? He says, Love does not boast. Do you feel the need to constantly remind people of who you are and what you have done, you know, or what you are capable of doing? It is not proud. Do you feel like you are the only one that has answers and thereby you find it difficult to release opportunities or delegate to others? It does not dishonor others. You know, are you rude in your approach? Do you cut people off mid sentence as soon as you discover that you don't like what you are hearing? You know, it, it is not self-seeking. Do you really want the best interests of others? Or is your leadership the kind that places burdens on others, yokes on others? They must do it by force, by force. And you completely miss the opportunity to respond to the needs of your followers. Let us pray that we will be led by love. Father Lord, cause us to be led by love in all of our decision makings. Help us, Heavenly Father, that, 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 that we, will, we, will, we will not become a liability or a burden you know, to those we have been called to lead, that we will not become, you know, you know, just just a nuisance to others. That Lord Almighty, that we will not, we will not, we will not be tempted to use manipulation, coercion, our pride, our, our envy, jealousy. You know, we will not. All those components will not contribute to the downfall of those who have been placed under under us, who have been placed under our influence that the Lord Almighty will release upon us that grace, oh God. Please, Heavenly Father, the grace to lead our right. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for what you have done for us tonight. Thank you this morning. Thank you for, what, for the prayers that you have enabled us to pray. There's so much to be said about leadership, but Lord, we know that you will breathe upon our hearts. You will breathe upon our hearts and you create opportunity. We'll take time away from no time to just be in fellowship with you and to for you to really breathe and expand upon how all that we have shared this morning is practicable and, 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 and applicable to our lives in jesus mighty name um we've prayed amen amen and i'm going to hand it over to bola uh, yes hi good morning everybody um I'm going to be talking about the persecuted, I'm praying about the persecuted church in Myanmar. So by way of background, um, Myanmar is, a, it used to be called Burma. It's a country in Southeast Asia. Uh, the president is Win Mint. The government is parliamentary uh, republic. So basically like a bicameral legislature, you know, like we have our Senate and our House of Rep and then the president is accountable to the legislature. And then the main religion is Buddhism. 
and the source of persecution is uh, Buddhist extremism and dictator dictatorial uh, military. They, there are uh, more than 54 million people in Myanmar, uh, and they have about uh, over 4 million Christians, uh, which is about 8% of the population. And the persecution level is very high. Uh, so some, uh, just some facts about um, Myanmar. So there's an increase in emphasis on Buddhism, and there's a strong pressure by the uh, Burmese majority, which is the majority ethnic group, for people to remain Buddhist. So basically, there's um, a lot of pressure for people to not convert from Buddhism to Christianity. And so Christian families are ostracized, um, and you know there's a lot of societal pressure for them to remain Buddhist, and their uh, children of these Christian converts um, face persecution um, and dis bullying and discrimination in, um, in, in school. So for instance, in school, the, the pupils are required to recite Buddhist prayers and teachings before school. You can imagine, you know, if you're a Christian being forced to recite Buddhist prayers before school. And then Christians, and it looks like it's mostly in the rural parts of the country, uh, have to practice their faith in secret and they're not free to evangelize for fear of losing their homes or, you know, having their places of worship forcibly taken away from them. And uh, there's also this um, issue where the government sort of like uh, uh, is implicit and supports the radical B Buddhist monks who then terrorize the Christians. Um, and then there's so more recently, there's been an increase in suffering for Christians in Myanmar because uh, they've been displaced because of fighting and then lots of them are in camps and then their young girls are trafficked and sold as brides to neighboring countries. And uh, just last year, the results, uh, there were reports of religious leaders who were captured or, you know, and uh, one of them, they still don't know the whereabout of. So this morning, I'm going to um, start by praying, uh, just thanking God for these Christians in Myanmar who face persecution when they convert to Christianity. Uh, in Psalm 1, 9, it says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wondrous works. And in Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks and praise him. So, Father, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Christians in Myanmar, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that in, in uh, even though they face persecution, Lord, when they convert to Christianity, they're still willing to undergo this persecution. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for their bravery. Thank you, Lord, for their strength. Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for their children who, who uh, in spite of being bullied in school, you know, still hold steadfast unto their faith. Father, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord, because you've commanded us to give thanks in all things, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for these Christians, because in our country, we enjoy freedom of religion. We don't have to worry about that. But we thank you, Lord, for people in other parts of the world, like Myanmar, who do not enjoy these freedoms, Lord. But in spite of this, Father, Lord, they still hold steadfast and they still uh, practice their faith. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I also want to pray for, uh, to touch the hearts of those in authority in um, Myanmar so that they can recognize the rights of their citizens um, to, to um, have freedom of religion. And also not just freedom, you know, uh, freedom of religion and also the freedom to preach the gospel and convert others from Buddhism to Christianity. So Father Lord, we just wanna, so in Proverbs 21, one, it says, the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord and he turns it wherever he wills. So Father Lord, we just wanna come this morning and pray for the powers that be in Myanmar, Lord. We, we commit them into your hands, Father Lord. Uh, we, we, we know that you can turn their hearts wherever way you will, Father Lord. We pray, Father Lord, that they will recognize the rights of their citizens to have freedom of religion, Father Lord. Um, so we just pray, Father Lord, that they will recognize their right. They will uh, stop the oppression, Father Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. We also want to commit the radical Buddhist monks who are persecuting the Christians in Myanmar into your hands, Lord. Um, 
We want to pray uh, that God will comfort them, bring them into the knowledge of you and your word. We also pray that these um, radical Buddhist monks will heal from any suffering and hurt that they might feel that may be making them to persecute the Christians, Lord. We pray that you forgive them for all they've done, Father Lord, and help them understand and feel the love of Christ. In Matthew 5, 44, it says, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. So this morning, Father Lord, we bring these radical um, Buddhist monks before you, Father Lord. We pray, Lord, that you forgive them, Lord. We pray them, Lord, that they experience the love of Christ, Father Lord. We pray, Lord, that you comfort them, Lord, that you give them the knowledge of your word, Father Lord, and that with this love, Father Lord, they will, um, they will uh, decrease, their, they will um, stop their persecution of the Christians in Myanmar, Father Lord. We pray that once they experience this love of Christ, that... Um, they will no longer persecute the Christians in Myanmar. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And also we want to pray for the strength of the Christians in Myanmar who uh, face persecution. Um, we pray for strength and courage for them to keep um, exercising their faith, to keep meeting, to keep worshiping, to keep meeting in the homes that they go to or the churches, to continue to preach the gospel, Lord, like you've, con like you've commanded us to, and also to, con to, to uh, continue to win converts into the body of Christ. We also pray that because of the danger that they're in, Lord, that you protect them and they're going out and coming in, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We pray, Lord, that you will strengthen uh, your children in Myanmar, Lord. These Christians who, in spite of the extreme danger and the persecution, Lord, that they still carry out their faith, Father, Lord. Uh, the fact that their property can be taken away from them, you know, the government is against them, Father, Lord. We thank you for their strength and their courage, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you continue to embolden them, Lord, that you give them the strength and courage that they need, Lord, to continue to exercise their faith, Lord. We pray, Father, Lord, that um their their strength and courage will not be in vain father lord that they will continue to win converts into the body of christ that you continue to protect them and their families in jesus mighty name we pray and so just want to thank god lord for answered prayers lord thank you lord for answered prayers lord because you said once we have come before you, uh, we, um, once we ask, Lord, the Lord, in your name, that it will be done, Father Lord. So we thank you, Lord, because we've asked in your name, and we thank you, Lord, because it's done. We thank you, Lord, for all the earlier prayers, Lord, on uh, Deborah and Anna, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers of uh, leadership, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, because it is done. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you very much, Paula, for such a passionate, passionate prayer this morning. God bless you. We really thank appreciate you. you. And thank mm -hmm. you very much, um, Titi, uh, for leading us in prayers today on, you know, the link between anointing, leadership and service. You really spoke some things that is so clear in our hearts. And I'm really quite excited and thankful that God is confirming his word in such a way amongst us. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nikes Jobalarewa. And thank you very much for joining EPR Prayer this morning. It's always a joy and a blessing um, when we all come together quietly, stand in the gap. Um, like um, when Titi was leading, you know, I was touched by the story of Anna. Anna was a woman that, you know, like Titi spotlighted, had an issue in her own life, you know. This was someone who, at a very young age, um, marriage, um, not age, but marriage years, um, lost her spouse, but dedicated her life to the service of God. And it just reminded me that all of us have one thing or the other we're trusting God for, that it may feel as if it hasn't come. But the time that you invest in the place of prayer, every Saturday, the Lord will honor you. And we might not see the impact of what we're doing when we're praying for nations or we rise up to command the weak or we go into the Holy Ghost hour. But during those times, God is birthing someone. Are we stand in the gap for the persecuted church. God is doing something through us. And so I thank God for it. And I want to use this opportunity to remind everyone about um, our 
monthly three-day Holy Ghost hour. It's always the first, second, and third of the month. The invite should, if it hasn't, I think it's already out, but if it's not, um, you should receive it today. Um, please use it to invite somebody. Most of us are used to the process and we'll just use the link. But more and more people, especially as we've pushed forward in command the week are reaching out to say please give me this information so please if you haven't please uh let's try and register some of us already have access to it but let's share and let's invite people to be a part of what god is doing the word for the month of june is release most of us remember that when the initial um time um what we are calling uh uh, the encampment occurred the lord gave us a clear word he said reset reposition release uh, it's not that these words are for a month and that's the end of it it's a it's a season we've entered so even as we pray those seasons in we in each of our individual lives god is doing something so we stand in the gap and we declare de de declare what god is doing and i believe it's time for the church you know when um titi was speaking it was spot on god is saying daughters arise in different areas it's going to use us to bring um salt and light to the earth and it's going to release the gifts inside of us so let's come pray as we get ready for that i'm also very excited about our monthly leadership meeting that takes place this month is inclusive leadership again just spot on um with, from our team our leadership core team they've done a fantastic job to prepare us what they're doing is that they, they help with the tools for those who serve in epr to prepare for what god has shown to us because what god has shown to us as a ministry is huge huge he gave us in 2019 god showed us the decade and so we've been preparing and i believe that as we join we'll be significantly blessed please mark this let's prepare there'll be information coming beforehand and i know we'll be richly blessed for our epr women's network for june exciting 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 um, may was so amazing the feedback was amazing and what the team is preparing for lines up with release we believe that God is opening great doors in terms of opportunities, in terms of the things that he's going to be doing. Sorry, the alarm across where I live. I hope it's not making too much noise. Um, it's been set off. So you might be hearing some noise in the background. Um, talks about securing your next job. I believe this is a time when every one of us, whether you are working or you're in the process of transitioning to a new role or you're trusting God at this point in time for a new position or you're believing God for what your next move would be. I want to strongly encourage us to be a part of this. The team are actually bringing together, based on the amazing feedback we had, bringing together some key professionals to help us look at how are we repositioned. There is a season of release. There's a season of open doors. There's a season for you to take the things that you've been doing. Some of us, even things we're doing here in EPR, some of us, how we are serving. There's a need to position all the skills and abilities that we have that those who see us will not see a resume, they will see a solution. When they see your resume, they see your CV, they look at it and they say, wow, the things that are in there that speaks to their heart about how you would solve a problem. So as a ministry, as an organization, the EPR Women's Network is bringing this to us and more information will be coming. I'd like to encourage as many of us to be a part of it. If you've not dusted your resume in a while, it's time to do it. If you've not updated your LinkedIn profile in a while, it's time to consider it and for us to position this for what God is doing. And of course, finally, um, let's continue to please stand in the gap for the persecuted church. Let's not be weary. Let's not be tired as we do that. I believe that the times that we're in for a lot of Christians in persecuted church is a time um, that they need support and they need help. I know God will do that. And that takes us over to what we do here in EPR. One of the things we believe and we encourage everyone each week is to give. I want to use this opportunity to thank everyone, to thank you for your partnership, to thank you for your support. You know, although we say it each week, the percentage of people might be low who have heeded, but the impact is still very high. And I want to use this opportunity to thank us. I want to thank you because in all that we're doing, I want to speak even that in your own life, the Lord will honor you and the Lord will bless you. I want to speak to all those who have partnered with us and everyone who partners with us, not just financially, but in the place of prayer, that God will lift you up. God will promote you. Most of us here, 
you have been very faithful. But those that God has given the grace to say, no matter what it is, I'm going to sow a seed for EPR, for the, for the persecuted church, for the foundation, for the ministry that, as we all know, God has enabled us to continue to minister to the lives of women. In every way that God gives you the ability to, either by giving financially on our BRR, give um, bitly, you can use that, or through the EPR Global dot uk if you want to do it through paypal any of those portals as god gives you the enablement you can do it but as most of us know in this season almost everybody is ordering online ordering through amazon um, these organizations they also want to give back amazon wants to support um, foundations like KIB. Amazon is saying that we, we know the work you're doing. If you're a charity, we want to support your foundation, we want to support your charity. So if you um, buy anything in this season, if you're an, a member of Amazon Prime, anytime or even order anything from Amazon, they will make a contribution from what you do to KIB. So even if you cannot give $10 uh, dollars or £10 pounds a month to support uh, EPR consistently, or you say, I want to do 20 pounds or 25 pounds. There are people here who do 100 pounds a month. God bless you. But when you order, please um, um, select KIB under smile.amazon.com. And that also helps us with the families that we are supporting. And the work there is not going down. In fact, it's been amazing. And God has shown us areas to take it to the next level. And we'll be sharing that as we go along. So I want to just say a big thank you. Sorry, we went over a little bit this week. But I just want to say thank you so much. The time, we say this, but it's not a closing remark. It's genuine that sisters, you've logged on at 12 and the time that you've invested is not wasted. As we've stood in the gap, as we've stood in the place of prayer, may heaven honor you and hear your cry. Please join us on Monday morning, 5 a.m. British and West African time, 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time, as we push and we release in the spirit that which God is doing. I'm super excited. I want to encourage all of us. Let's get ready, get ready, get ready. We'll be looking to also incorporate some time of testimony, um, but we're going to be doing that in a big way as we move into the second half of the year. So um, let's get ready. Things that God has done in our lives, things that during this whole uh, pandemic, you, God has been moving and moving. There's been healing. There's been breakthrough. There's been deliverance. There's been mental release. There's been a lot of things God is doing. We're going to prepare a special testimony session coming up as we go into the second half of the year. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you and have a fantastic weekend. And I hope you get to rest as well. God bless you. <music>